Welcome back. This is part three of basic probability. We are covering the multiplication rule, addition rule, conditional probability, the complement of an event, all using the rolling of a die as our example. Um, if you haven't watched parts one and two yet, you'll want to go back and watch those so that you're not lost. I will show you again though um, our events just in case you want to just watch this video. So A is the event of rolling an even number, B is rolling an 8, and C is rolling a square number. And those are the individual probabilities that we had already calculated. I'm going to move on to another one here. So I'm introducing two new things. You can see we have the union symbol there, as well as we have a complement, okay? The complement of B, or I would read it as not B, okay? That's with the line over it. Sometimes you'll also see the notation like this, okay? With a little dash next to it. I'm just keeping it simple and using one notation. Just use whatever you have to for your purposes, okay? So the symbol U. Okay, this union symbol, I'm just saying the word U because it looks just like a U, okay? We want to associate that with the word or, the word union, okay, and addition. Okay, so that's what you should think when you see that symbol. So, we will start by writing out our general addition rule, okay? which is the probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, okay? And this is because we don't care if it satisfies both of them, we just care that it satisfies at least one, okay? So at least one means it could satisfy A or it could satisfy B, or it could satisfy both. The problem is, is that if you add up all of A and all of B and they share some number or some outcome, some of the values are within each of those sets, well, then you're going to be counting that area twice, okay? So that's why we subtract the intersection, we subtract the and, okay? And that's so that it's only counted one time. So all the values are only counted once. Don't worry about that too much. You can always watch the other video showing the Venn diagrams with the circles, okay? And that'll show you a little bit better about why this addition rule holds. You can always just memorize it as well. In this problem, we have A union not B. That's how I would read it. Again, we also said that not B is called the complement of B. It means it's everything that is not B, okay? Uh, we have a rule for complements that I'll write out here, just to introduce it. You probably won't need to use it for this problem, but uh, it's good to know. Helps you understand as well. Okay, the probability of B plus the probability of not B would equal one. Okay, because if it doesn't, if it doesn't satisfy B, then that would mean it would satisfy not B. So all outcomes would have to either fit into B or not B. Okay. And that's why the probability of adding those two together would give you one. In this problem, we had the event B, meaning that it is an eight, right? Okay, so not B would mean not an eight. Well, what numbers or what outcomes are not an eight? All of them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, none of those are eight. So that means that the probability of not B would be 1, because it would have to be not 8, okay? Um, and this also makes sense, because remember that the probability of B was 0, because it was impossible. And so this equation holds true in this case, okay? It will always hold true. Okay, so now we'll write out the formula again, but using the variables from this question. So we have the probability of A or not B. So it's any outcome that satisfies A, or not B, or both. So we'll take all the outcomes that satisfy A, we'll take all the outcomes that satisfy B, and in case there's any that are in both, we need to subtract that intersection so that we don't count twice. 
okay? Because all of these numbers here, all of these outcomes that they both share will have been counted at, in, in each of these. So we need to subtract it once so that it's only counted once, okay? So now we have the probability of A, which we remember was one half. The probability of B naught, we just said, is one. It has to be a naught eight. <laughs> and minus this probability of A and not B. Okay, so these are even numbers and they're not an eight. So logically that means the even numbers would satisfy both of those conditions. So remember that the even numbers, one out of every two numbers was even. So that's one half, okay? So what does that give us? One. Which makes sense because all the outcomes satisfy not B. So any outcome would work to satisfy that union with the not B. And that's why the answer is one. It'll definitely satisfy either A or not B because it all, all of them satisfy not B. So that union with A didn't even add anything. We already had all the outcomes coming from this part, the not B. Okay. We'll do one more problem here. So we have the probability of not B and not C. Let's just use some logic for this one. We want outcomes that satisfy both not B and not C. In other words, we want when we roll the number that it's not an eight and it's not a square number. Okay, all outcomes satisfy B, right? We've said that a few times now. So we just need to see which ones also satisfy not C. Not C means not a one or a four, okay? It's just the, so the number is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's our total sample space, right? And then C, that area was only one and four. Those were our square numbers. So not C is the difference between these two. It's what is not in here that is in our sample space. So those numbers two, three, five, and six. Okay, so we need it to be two, three, five, and six, one of those, and for it to not be an eight. And like we said, that doesn't change anything. So as long as it's one of these four, it would work. Okay, so four outcomes out of the possible six outcomes gives us two out of three as our answer for this whole problem. Okay. This brings us to the conclusion of this lesson in basic probability. Uh, subscribe to my Elite Tutoring channel for more free tutoring videos. I will be adding more and more videos over the next few weeks. Uh, also, email me at julie at elitetutoring.ca for a full practice test with solutions on basic probability. I'll send you the practice test totally free. Um, if you do end up wanting some full detailed solutions to the test, then I can send you those for a nominal charge. Um, also, you can email me if you want a custom video created for your own needs. I tutor statistics, finance, economics, and accounting, and I can also send you updates on new content that I have available in your subject area. So thanks for learning.